Yay! Attendees coming in. Hello! Yeah, so you can see in your screens underneath Jose and Beth, um, the attendees are filling in now. So we're expecting, I think, around 200 plus because the registered number for this specific webinar is 400. Um, I don't know how the turnout will be since this is one of those rare moments that we do it in the morning. So we will see the results today. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So welcome again to PSTV's Learn From Home series. Uh, my name is John Baluyot and I'm the president of the Philippine Society for Talent Development. And with me are Beth um, Decimo, right? Yay. That's our mo. That's our mo. That's our mo. Yes. And, um, and Jose Colongon. So Beth will be our main speaker for the day. She will be more introduced by Jose. And Jose will be our main moderator. He's currently the head of the Research and Publications Committee of PSTV's Oplan Hope. All right. So for people who are here, can you please tell us where you're calling from so that Beth will also know and Jose will know um, which part of the Philippines you are from. Good morning, Arian Rojas. Hello. Good morning, Luz. Oh, Beth, Luz is here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Galaxy J4. Good morning, everyone from Davao City. Welcome. Madel. Madel is a very um, frequent attendee from Las Piñas. And then Jeanette from Antipolo. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Chati de from Cavite. Chati Desena from Cavite. Christina Magadia from Quezon City. So we have a lot of people coming from, calling from the metropolis and we also have a lot of people calling from different parts of the Philippines. As you know, Beth, we have 7,100 plus islands. <laughs> so, so, so hearing people calling from different parts of the country is really amazing considering the internet connection. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, so everyone, just to... Just to also double check, um, can you hear us well? Can can you hear me well? Am I clear? Yes. Okay. Thank and you. If, Jose. if they can hear me, and if they can hear me well as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you come clear. across close to me. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay. How about you, Beth? Great. Can you? Yes. Here I am. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, yes. I see some yeses now. I can, I can hear you. Well. Terrific. <laughs> I can hear you. Thank you. All right. So it's already 9.49, 10 minutes. Um, just keep them coming, guys. So we now have around 92 attendees in the call. That's amazing. And it's not even 10 in the morning. So um, and also for everyone, just to also double check if we are... Uh, if our slides are seen already in the screen, can you just give us a yes if you can see um, our slides like Oplan Hope main objectives? Slides are okay, slides are okay. This is amazing. The audience is really very quick in giving us feedback. So, so you, yeah. al you already have an idea, Beth, the, about the type of responses that you will be able to get and the speed and the quantity of these responses when you engage them later on. It's going to be fabulous. It is. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> right. Me too. So, Jose, let me now turn over to you so that you can claim your remaining 10 minutes to discuss a little bit about Offline Hope and why we are exactly doing all of this. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, John. All right. Uh, do I have control of the slides before I start? Yep, you do. Do I? Uh, I don't. You just have to double click in the screen, yeah. Let me just go back a little bit. Yep. All right. So good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to um, our Learn From Home series again. And before we start, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the background of uh, why we're doing this. Uh, what's the background between Oplan Hope, with Oplan Hope? So Hope stands for Hang On People Enablers. And the reason why we did this is obviously in the context of COVID-19, uh, we are all facing a lot of challenges. And we developed this mainly really to support our Philippine learning community during this uh, time of crisis. 
and also to provide uh, the Philippine Society for Talent Development a means by which we could sustain uh, what we do. So we have like a slogan that's uh, driving all of us, including all the professional services team, uh, even our uh, members, as well as our uh, the different stakeholders of PSTD, and that's to help now and uh, gain later. So, uh, so again, this is part of our Learn From Home series where we have uh, speakers from all over the world. So mm -hmm. what you see on screen are just some of uh, some of those speakers, both from uh, different uh, organizations and different backgrounds of both local and international learning and development leaders. So what have uh, we accomplished uh, so far? So, so far we've had 12 classes from thought leader organizations, uh, 4,748 attendees via Zoom, and we're also doing this live on Facebook. And we have more than, uh, we have almost 32,000 uh, views, which is amazing considering we have only done this for what, two or three weeks. And uh, we're, uh, with everyone's help and, you know, a really good teamwork, we were able to accomplish all of this. Um, in terms of what's next, uh, I hope that uh, you guys can still uh, join us in the succeeding sessions. So you have here on uh, today, you have developing digital leader skills. Uh, tomorrow, we have a, a session with the title, What Do You Include in an Interactive uh, Webinar? On May 6, we have developing uh, brain-friendly, uh, engaging webinars. And on May 8, we have lead your team during challenging times as well as uh, effective virtual uh, classrooms. So again, these are all going to be delivered by different uh, organizations, uh, m both local and international uh, LND leaders. So uh, where have our panelists and speakers come from? So you can see all those uh, points all over the globe. Um, and what we wish is we could expand this some more. So if there some of you who want to uh, be a speaker, uh, you know, just contact us. And also, if you want to uh, recommend a speaker, please, please do so. So like our speaker today, uh, she's from General uh, Electric, um, all hailing, hailing from uh, the other side of the world in the United States. So it's kind of late for her. Um, but uh, thank you very much, uh, Beth, for uh, you know staying up late uh, just so we could to to be able to share uh, your learnings. Oh, uh, another program uh, that we have, um, uh, aside from the Learn from Home series, which is under Oplan Hope, is what we call the PSTD Kamustahan TikTok. So it's a play on uh, that a very popular social media, you know, channel. Um, and it's really about uh, us giving you a chance to be able to, uh, just to have to someone to talk to. So in a world where stress levels are high, sometimes all it takes is for someone to ask, Kamusta ka? You know, which is, how are you? And TikTok is an avenue where PSDD seasoned talent development practitioners will offer a 15 to 20 minute online kamustahan session. And so far we've had uh, 23 TikTok buddies. So these are the people that you can talk to. And all of them are, are, are uh, certified coaches and um, counselors. Uh, so very professional. And so far we've had 10 TikTokers. So uh, I hope uh, if you need to, you, you always have someone to talk to here in PSTD. Uh, the most recent program that we've uh, started is what we call Chillax with PSTD. So these are chill conversations, actionable insights. It's basically a, a consolidation of the, 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 the learnings that we've had for the past week. So every week there's a theme. So uh, of, let's say for this coming week, which we have on May 9, on 3 p.m., we have our president of PSTD, John Baluyot. 
um, along with Len Pozon, who's the marketing director Pioneer, of Pioneer Insurance, and Nerissa Berba, um, the senior vice president for Human Resources at Security Bank. Uh, they're just going to be there in an informal way to talk about the learnings from all the Learn From Home series, all the speakers, all the sessions that we've had for, for that week. And uh, it's really in a very informal way. We ask for audience participation. So the fourth member here, even though there's no picture, the fourth member is actually you. So if you attend this, uh, they actually ask people to, to go live um, and speak about what their ideas are and what their learnings are. And it's really contextualized and localize the different learnings that we have from uh, our international speakers. So uh, what can you do for our cause? Uh, please like our page on Facebook. Uh, you can see the link here, facebook.com uh, slash mypstd, or please be a PSTD member. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in terms of how you can uh, register to PSTD, as well as our paid pro programs. So if you're a member of uh, PSTD, we have two types of uh, membership. We have corporate membership, uh, which is for organizations. We also have individual uh, membership for pra our individual practitioners and consultants. Uh, we have a, a special promo uh, now, which is to go for 15 months uh, membership. And uh, for, for all of those who will register for um, by June 15, 2020, normally we just have a year's worth of membership, but because of this time and really want to give uh, value to uh, higher value or additional value to our members. Uh, if you can register, um, you'd be able to get this. Uh, in terms of the benefits, there's a lot of benefits to becoming a member. Uh, for individuals, you get uh, to choose uh, to get to attend uh, any two paid sessions of Itipanan or the paid webinar. So the Itipanan, that's around 500 pesos. Um, and the paid webinar is normally 1,000 pesos. So um, for individual memberships, I think the membership is around 2,800, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and just by attending, by availing of that membership, you get to, you know, uh, very close to getting your ROI. For our corporate members, if you, uh, if you go for that, you get to have five people from your organization to attend an Itipanan or a paid webinar. And the cost of a corporate membership is 5,600. So in addition to these, uh, you know, quite valuable webinars and uh, Tipanans, we also have the community of practice, uh, which is really focused on digital learning, where you can freely ask uh, from uh, our experts as well as the community what they know about digital learning and you can also be able to show your and share your expertise. So if you become a member we have uh, obviously as an individual you become part of this community of practice and if for corporate members you get three of your people to attend and participate. We also have L&D resources. You have uh, state of the industry reports, need analysis reports, uh, learning synthesis from all of these turn from home series. We have uh, articles. So all of these are developed by our members as well as our research and publications team. Um, you know, it's in, in a way, PSTD is also trying to survive at this point. And uh, so far we've only been able to recoup uh, five to ten percent of our uh, of our monthly uh, operations expenses. Uh, so even though PSTD is a nonprofit organization, we do still need to be able to sustain these operations. There's a lot of work actually that goes into these uh, webinars, whether it's paid or not. So we'd really appreciate your support. Uh, there is a lot of value in becoming a member. So I hope to see you in our membership meetings. So uh, again, as an example of uh, the upcoming events or the paid, paid events that you can attend, we have uh, one from Lisa Makuha, uh, Alizalde, which is uh, on May 14. So she's our prima ballerina and uh, her topic is on finding strength and uh, uh, 
finding strength and in discipline and structure through this um, uncertain time. And also we have Gallup on May 13. Uh, this is also paid. So uh, we have three speakers uh, uh, from Gallup, Kanika, Saurav, uh, and Angie. And the topic is on focusing on your strengths to build resilience. Uh, we also have the Tipanan, uh, which is scheduled on May 21. And this is uh, called, um, the topic will basically be the right blend, a guide for using traditional and digital learning solutions. Uh, and this will be facilitated by Jody Salas. Uh, he's the managing director of Raza Consulting that really specializes on uh, digital learning. Now, uh, for you to be able to join any of our uh, paid programs. Uh, this is our website. Uh, just uh, go to that website and click on the lower left portion on become a member today and you get uh, to have an application form and we'll uh, process that very quickly. Another option is to use the, just scan the QR code and it'll, it'll take you to this site. Okay. Now, uh, we're about to start, uh, so we just have a few norms uh, that we wish to share to our attendees, particularly, uh, particularly to those who are um, attending this for the first time. So attendees will be in mute, and it's really to manage the flow of information. I'm not sure how many members, uh, how many people have signed in, John? Uh, do we have around? There are around 400 people, Jose, who signed in, and amazing enough, we now have 300 participants in the call. That's 75% wow. of the industry. 75%. <laughs> yes. so that's, that, that's really great because normally we have our sessions in the afternoon and um, yeah, for a Monday morning, I think that's really good. Everyone's had their coffee. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I hope are having their coffee now. So, so that's great. Uh, for your questions, um, and just to make sure that we get, that we are able to see your questions on the lower uh, on the lower portion of the interface, there's a Q and A tab. So please sure to uh, click on that and put your questions there. Otherwise, if you put it, it in the chat, uh, of course we'll try to do our best, but sometimes it gets missed if you put it there. So if you have any questions, just put it in the uh, Q and A tab on Zoom. Uh, but if you wish to just uh, share your ideas, uh, you have some uh, comments or inputs, just put them in the chat tab. And I think in terms of interactions, uh, we, that, yeah, I think that's a place where you can put your ideas. Um, only for our Zoom logged in participants uh, who have stayed for at least 40 minutes, uh, you will get a certificate from this program. So it's a very good, uh, I would say, value adding, um, I would say, service provided by PSTD. At least you have proof that you've gained this knowledge and that's something that you can use for, uh, let's say, for your future references. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker. So our speaker today is Beth Desomu. And um, uh, Beth will talk about developing digital leader skills. Uh, Beth started her professional career in information technology consulting in the 1990s uh, with many opportunities to bring technology and people together, sometimes for the first time. Uh, Beth has served at GE for more than 22 years in information technology leadership. Six Sigma quality and learning and development roles, uh, serving global audiences from more than 80 countries. That's amazing. Uh, Beth has remained curious and excited to learn about people, technology, and how they interact, and feels these are key ingredients to a career filled with happiness and success. Uh, so, um, also, again, as a reminder, type in your questions uh, in the Q&A tab. So uh, I'll give the floor to Beth. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. Uh, Beth, you can start um, with your sharing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I'm just going to see if I can. Oh, it's telling me I can't share while you're sharing. All right. So sorry. Uh, let I'll it just, go. Yeah. I will try again. I have to let Good it day, go. everyone. Thank <laughs> you. No worries. And um, it, it's just such a pleasure 
to be with you. I am very, very excited to be here today. My dear former colleague, still friend, Luz, um, uh, reached out to me over LinkedIn, and I, I have to say it was an immediate yes. So I'm really, really happy to share just a few things that I've learned. Um, I'm really excited to hear um, through chat and, and Q&A, so I'm going to ask Jose to help me with that here um, while we're going along. I only have a few pre um, presentation slides because um, I really like to hear from you. <laughs> Can you see my first slide? Yes, yes, Beth. Yes, Beth. Great. Super. Um, well, I do want to make sure that I give just a little hint out because not everybody might know who General Electric is. Um, we are a 128 year old company and it's, um, it's kind of important to the context of what I'm here to talk to you about today because I think our culture has a lot to do with how we approach digital skills for our leaders. And, um, and as Jose was so kind in introducing me, I am in learning now for almost 20 years, um, but I did start my career as an information technology professional. So I've had the great benefit of being sort of in the digital community first. So um, when we started picking this up for real in our leadership development, um, curriculum. It was quite a treat. <laughs> so GE, um, we make things that spin, uh, is, is how I like to think about it in a, the simplest way. So you'll see jet engines, and um, we make turbines that create electricity, we make healthcare equipment, and a little bit of uh, other things, but we've really changed a lot in the last three years, and that has helped us, especially with the digital um, decisions that we've made in terms of the products, the process, and the people, the impacts that the digital transformations in the world of technology are having for us. And I think that's really important. So um, I don't think this is a question that you can answer the same way for everybody. So just a little bit more information about GE that helps me tell the story. Um, we are a company that has always prided ourselves on innovation. Our founder um, is one of the you know, founders of electricity and light bulbs in the United States. And um, we've dedicated an awful lot of our time and resources to ingenuity and coming up with new things and solving new problems. So um, about, I would say almost 10 years ago, we did actually think that we were gonna have, and we still do have, a digital business. So it's not just that digital skills are important in our, um, across our company, but we actually delved into the products and services. And I have to say that they've made their way into each one of our divisions. And it's very important for us to understand not just the implications of the products that we're trying to build and things like cybersecurity and all those great digital topics, but it's not just the content, and that's what I really want to share with you today. Some of the things that we discovered as we were trying to become a more digital company, the things that we learned about even just how we learn. So um, this is just an information background for you to understand that we're mostly an industrial company now. Uh, through the years, GE has had all kinds of different divisions, uh, but right now we pride ourselves on four core businesses. Um, aviation, so airplane engines, um, healthcare, things like um, MRIs and CT scanners, big machines that scan your body. Renewable energy, primarily wind turbines, um, some hydroelectric power, and also um, the, the GE Power um, portfolio itself, big gas turbines, um, things that are probably bigger than some of the buildings you're even sitting in today. So it's a pretty exciting business. And, um, and what we really have to do at, at where I work, I work across all those divisions. So I have the privilege of sitting in our corporate headquarters. Um, we have a leadership university. It's called Crotonville. And we have to think about for everybody across the company, what are our key leadership uh, capabilities today and tomorrow? And what are the types of things that our senior leaders and our business leaders are telling us um, all levels of leadership need to learn in order to be more effective? 
you don't need me to tell you that things change really crazy fast these days. I took a typewriter when I went to college, a typewriter. <laughs> and now I have a digital phone, right? So um, it's been a little crazy for me uh, to understand how we have made these transformations. And what we really wanted to do was get accurate from a leadership development perspective. What are we defining as a digital leader? It's not just the people who are um, thinking of the products for the industrial internet of things, right? It's not just the people who are writing the software. We all have to be a little bit more digital. And what did that mean? So we would have people who come from finance, people who come from software, people who are physically in the plant, building manufacturing, you know, big turbines, all coming to our classes together. So our common definition went something like this as we were cycling up what we consider to be more digital leadership type classes. People, no matter where they sit in the company, need to be able to accept and use and, and assess digital products and services, either the ones we're making or things we're asking people to use in order to do their job better. Um, so a phone um, could be, and, and, and Zoom, and some of the things that we've rapidly had to get used to in the learning community here um, with the advent of all the challenges with COVID in the past couple of months. Then recognizing what digital means, not just for yourself, but for our processes and the other people that we work with. Um, both the opportunities and the possibilities, as well as some of the implications and limitations. We um, create a lot of intellectual property at GE, so we invent a lot of stuff. And one of the things that we get concerned about is how fast can we collaborate, but in a safe way, right? So there's that opportunity of how many engineers can we connect around the world? We have people that sit in almost 90 countries. It's wonderful, right? Imagine the brain power of connecting everybody. And then there's this oh no moment of it needs to be really safe and we need to be able to keep our materials and some of the ideas that we have inside the company. So the last thing that I think has been one of the biggest aha moments for me is how rapidly we have to adapt and we kind of needed to learn how to learn all over again. And so one of those things that I, the way that we used to learn um, when I started my career, um, it was a lot of book learning, a lot of lecture, and things were a little steadier. And things that we were studying didn't change quite so fast. Now we're lucky, I think, if we stay with the same, even some of the same video conferencing tools for more than a couple of years in a row. And, uh, and, and I usually do a lot of live in-person training, um, but I've, I've been very uh, grateful to be in a video or in some sort of virtual capacity for nearly 20 years. And I can tell you how different that is. <laughs> um, we didn't used to get to do video at all. And we would have to ship CDs of material out because we couldn't share files of a certain size. And, uh, and look at where we are now. Um, I can't believe we're streaming live. I'm still getting used to that. So here's where we are. We got to a point where we realized that our current trajectory, we were teaching people great leadership and management skills. It wasn't enough. It wasn't meeting people um, where they were at because we had a, a really big gap depending on what people knew when they came into the company and where we needed them to go. We needed to be clearer for people. And so, um, we had to get really clear on what we decided that digital leadership like platform was going to look like for people. What were we going to push them to do? And really, most importantly, why? Why should they do it? Right? So the purpose of our learning became really important. And, um, and, and we wanted to be very careful about not pushing specific technologies so much as the idea of how fast can you upgrade your software? 
right? So not only is software changing all around us and the services and the products that use the software, how about, how, how's my upgrade plan going? How long does it take me to upgrade, right? So we, we kind of wanted to, um, to have the leaders start to think of themselves in terms of how fast can I keep up? And, um, and we didn't want to just teach a particular um, platform or a particular even um, uh, technology because um, cybersecurity, really important all the time, right? But um, some of the other technologies, like we were um, scaling up digital twins and digital threads um, for a while. And um, all of us were supposed to become somewhat proficient on that because at the time, in the early 2010s, like 2012, 2013, that was going to be a major part of our strategy moving forward for the entire company. And so all the divisions were playing with digital twins and digital threads, and we had brilliant factories, and we had all this stuff that we frankly don't have now. There is, those concepts still exist, but the idea of commercializing that and understanding how that served our customer and how we could make use of it inside of our company and make it useful for our customers to solve their problems. Um, that knowledge has evolved over time. And at one time, GE was putting on these huge conferences, Minds and Machines, I think it started in 2012, and we were going all in on software. We were gonna create the Microsoft Windows of the Internet of Things. I mean, we had some very bold moves. And um, we have since learned that the especially one of the things that we were um, probably a little green on. Technology for technology's sake is not the deal, right? Technology has to solve a problem in order for it to be really meaningful and something people would pay for, right? And, and we knew that intellectually, but it's kind of hard when you get some really exciting things going um, not to get excited about it. So this idea of upgrade, how do I upgrade my leadership skills? How do I stay connected with the technology? Knowing that as a leader, it's really in this day and age, not my job to be the most, um, maybe the biggest, um, most knowledgeable expert in the room or the person who's got the access to all of the technology. My job as a leader these days is to ask the best questions to figure out how to get the experts together on a page so that we know what we're solving for, right? And then let the experts come in and, and all contribute. So can I create this opportunity for everybody to upgrade together, but not necessarily upgrade all the same skills? So I hope that makes sense because what I'd really like to do is just jump right in to an example of a class that I actually built based on these ideas. But first, Jose, I'd like to see, would we have any questions based on all that stuff? Yes, uh, yes, we have a number of questions, Beth. Uh, Pick one. There's, yeah, yeah, just a quick one. And I think this is, I would say, quite basic, but also quite important. Here's a question uh, from Rafael, actually. He was asking, what was the process of coming up with the definition of digital leaders? Yes, excellent. So it really has to do with the company's strategy. So what is the company trying to accomplish, right? And then for us, um, we started out with a definition that ended up changing quite a bit. And the reason that it changed is because the company's strategy changed, right? So I think it's much like the definition of leadership or the definition of success or all these other you know, strategy, these really important words that get overused. Um, you have to decide what digital means to your company, right? If you're selling t-shirts, what are the technology um, you know, aspects that you're using? Is it like social media to market your work, right? Is it, is it um, the, the technology? For us, digital, one of the biggest things digital ended up being was 3D printing. Additive manufacturing has actually changed, especially in aviation, literally changed the game for us um, in terms of parts that we can build that are lighter but more durable because they're not, they're not manufactured in the old way of chipping away pieces of metal. We actually build up fan blades and some other things 
not even just using different technologies to be able to create stronger structures, we're actually using different materials. Composites like ceramic composites that could actually take more heat than a metal. So it's very, very important that you never let the, the idea of what is a digital leader stray too far from what you guys are doing and what, is, what are the, the, the known things or maybe even some of the disruptors that have come into your industry. It's really important to know where you're at and, um, and not try and take, not try and borrow GE's digital leader definition, right? Because if you're in another kind of company, it's not going to work. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good uh, answer, uh, Beth. Uh, you know, we shouldn't just copy, I would say, as you yeah. said. It's really putting it in the context of what really is valuable and what's needed in the business. So yeah. uh, that's a very great example in terms of 3D printing as one of the technological changes that you've embraced. But again, it's contextualized. It was something that was, that's really important in the organization or that part yeah. of that organization. Right. And I wish it was easier, but the idea is, is you almost have to be um, an archaeologist, right? You, you have to be curious and you have to, um, you have to study a little bit what, what's really going to be the most important part. Okay, that's interesting. Thanks. Uh, there's, uh, are, do you have room for additional questions? I would or we go, love we to. Go yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, here's a question on the why of learning. Um, it's one of the biggest struggles uh, in, in, in the company of the one who's asking the question. And he was saying in, in such times of uncertainty, people tend to cling to what they know and, you know, they sort of stay inert. Uh, how do you get people on board to upskill and learn, uh, especially yes. in a company with such varied age groups and interests? Yeah, and we're struggling with that right now because we're not able to you know, even some of the live classes that have good um, awareness of the, you know, the power and the brand of the class, people have to think, okay, first of all, it's safe for me to admit I don't know everything. <laughs> and, and I feel is one of the biggest parts of my job, whether I'm online, whether I'm creating a class that I'm not even live teaching, it needs to feel safe not to know what I'm, a, what I'm about to go in and learn. Right, so I feel like that's one of my biggest responsibilities ever is to um, less judgment, more curiosity right off the bat. Wouldn't it yeah. be cool if, right? So yeah. um, I, ho I hope that when we, when we lay that platform out, we combine that with um, the messages that are strong that the business values things, right? I don't wanna have people come in and just learn a skill that they may or may not use. And so we try and do our due diligence to make sure that there's always a business value that we can connect it to at a certain level and then quickly invite people in to, to make their connection at this, at this next level down, if you will, right? So here's what, the, what your business is telling me is important. How do we translate that for each individual? And I have the um, privilege of mostly teaching multi-day classes. And so we have the time whether I have 25 or 50 people in the room, um, I do get the time to go through that. In a virtual world, I try to use chat and some of the other things to be um, a little bit quicker, um, but I definitely feel like you shouldn't be pushing too much information at people if they're still not sure why they're there. So I am completely with you and, that, and, and we call it uh, we FM, what's in it for me? <laughs> if anybody yeah. remembers FM radio. Yes, I remember, yes. <laughs> and I just go right for it, right? So I am just the kind of person who I want to hear the questions, I want to hear the concerns, and I, I want to make it um, a situation where we feel like co-learners as fast as we can. So you're here to explore with me. I'm not here to just, you know, I haven't been in the knowledge transfer business since the internet. I feel like the way that we teach is so different now. We teach much more experientially and we think so much more, um, at least in my little group, about the entire experience. Why would people even come? You know, that wasn't a question we asked 10 years ago. And, yeah. and what will people leave with, right? And so, and so this idea of even the, the people in the class teaching each other, we have to be good role models for not being the smartest person in the room when it came to 
writing a cybersecurity module, I was not that person. I could barely spell it. <laughs> so, you know, you, um, you invite other people in to, to speak, you invite other people in to, to share their knowledge. And I think that the learners too, you know, um, we at NGE have a lot of people who didn't start with GE in their careers. Um, so you never know what kind of beautiful things they know that we don't know that we could be helped by. So. Okay. Thanks a lot, Beth. Uh, sure. I'll, hold on. I'll hold some of the questions and so you can continue with, uh, um, with your presentation. Thank you. That's super. Yes, we'll definitely have time for more because I only have a couple more slides left. I did want to provide a practical example because um, we could talk about theory all day long, but I wanted to show you one of the things we tried to do to solve for digital skills improvement in our leaders. And so um, when we were opening up a new class in, in 2019, actually, feels longer ago, <laughs> um, we, we thought about this balance. And these, this class was a one-week class that I put together for what I would call our leaders of leaders. So they weren't our frontline leaders, um, but they were the people who had direct reports, who had um, teams on the ground. Okay. So these are a little bit more senior middle managers and what we wanted to do is get them comfortable with, if, if you have a really technical job, that's great, but it's probably pretty narrow. We work at big companies, so nobody knows everything about the technology that impacts your job. Um, we also wanted to take a process bent. Uh, for a long time, GE has been very interested in process improvement. Um, I got um, a, a seat in the Six Sigma ride back in the early 2000s, and now we are full on in lean, if anybody reads anything about us. Um, so process is really important in marrying that, like why are we using this technology anyway, or why should I care about this technology? Because you have a process that's about to get blown up, right? Or um, could get a lot faster if you only used this tool. Uh, but we do not teach a leadership class without a whole bunch of people stuff. And I firmly believe um, that you manage things and time and projects, but you lead people, right? So the big, the big merry point for me um, in the classes that we're teaching is how do we get, okay, technology is here. It could help us or it could hurt us. Um, really get to know your process and where the opportunities and the impacts are and never forget about your people. Never forget there's some people in front of you and some people behind you with this subject. And on the next subject, you might be the one who's the most behind. How do you catch up? Leaders of this generation ask great questions to figure it out, right? And so I think one of our favorite phrases over the last five years has been, figure it out. How fast can you figure it out? Can you get accurate with, is this technology going to help or hurt me, right? Is this, is this coming up or not? Nobody has time to research all day, but what we did do in this class was we picked five topics, five technical topics to go through at some level of detail. So a module on cybersecurity, a module on digital twin, a module on data analytics. We didn't just study data analytics. We, we studied why it matters to our customers and therefore to our business. Right? So you, we always like to try and look externally first because we try to think of ourselves as not a company that builds products that we hope other people buy, but one of our cultural tenets is we help our customers solve tough problems or we solve the world's challenges. So we try really hard to think our purpose is to make the world and our customer's world in particular better. Then we say inside it's really good if we make some money because that means we can do that again tomorrow. And then my favorite module of this whole thing that I consider to be a technical module, how do you identify the hype? What software says it's gonna do that it doesn't really do or what people are talking about? Um, I ran across this um, nano, um, this whole like generation of like a na nano, um, tiny, tiny, tiny little sensors. And um, as, you, as you turn out um, and, and start to look at the industry, there's an awful lot of really cool theory that is just 
not quite built yet, <laughs> right? So everybody's talking about it, but nobody's really doing it. Um, and that's a really important thing for us in terms of figuring out what we spend money on and don't spend money on as leaders or time or our resources. And then how it works. Okay, so somebody's proven it, somebody's actually selling it. Um, how does that um, piece of technology or that um, technological service actually work inside a business rather than its beautiful theory, right? Um, and then the last thing for a leader is once I understand cybersecurity, you know, what is it going to take for me to implement? In particular, I have this wonderful gentleman who, um, who started the company, gosh, over 10 years ago now, and he's a, he was a cybersecurity expert. And, uh, and I lent him my laptop so he'd get his benefits in his, his first day on the job, his laptop was not working. And he's like, oh, you don't want me to touch your laptop um, because in five minutes, I'll find out everything about you. <laughs> so I learned my lesson to always stay in touch with Chris. And uh, what it takes to implement in terms of cybersecurity, I didn't even know there's two big buckets. There's one for office environments for businesses, and there's a different set of impl um, implementation um, concerns and even some of the um, priorities when you're in a manufacturing environment. Because some of our machines are so old, they can't even talk to each other. Um, and then there's, there's different things that you have to worry about in a different order. So um, if you're on the manufacturing floor and you spend time in an office, you kind of have to know both. Um, otherwise, you would take your knowledge from one environment and try and apply it to another environment. Not so good. Um, the process and um, awareness is just, you know, this idea of problem solving and getting us as efficient as possible and then as effective as possible. And my favorite way to go through this in this class was the idea of you can improve an existing process for a long time, but then there's this disruption thing that seems to catch a lot of attention. Um, so improving to the point of optimization is super, but then we had to ask people, at what point do you disrupt your own process? At what point do you have to abandon the old way, no matter how close to entitlement you're getting at some point, um, at least in our businesses, there have been some profound disruptions. And it never comes from your direct competitors. It comes from some little upstart who figured out how to do something better, <laughs> right? And, and you never see it coming. And so this idea of becoming your own disruptor became central to this class. And I felt like it started in process, but it was also in people too. So the technology is gonna keep disrupting itself. What can we do to have a mind of a disruptor, an intentional people disruptor, but in a positive way? So what are those 21st century skills? What are the perspectives that we need in order to feel more comfortable disrupting ourselves? How can we feel more comfortable second guessing ourselves, knowing we have it right today, but that that's not good enough tomorrow and still being a confident leader and still standing in front of your people and saying, we're doing the right thing. And I wanna take some of our resources and do it a little differently and start innovating on ourselves, right? So it was a really cool class that we put together. And I, I, I feel like in particular, this is the one where we were challenging people's um, learning process as much as we were their knowledge base. So this is a picture. Um, I made them build a robot. <laughs> These little M bots um, in the, in the, at the top, the little blue machine. I actually put them through an, a week-long simulation. Um, in some of my classes, another class, we, we kind of zoomed out and we said, okay, for digital, we're gonna talk about the digital impacts on society. And we used a, a report from the wonderful nonprofit World Economic Forum, and, and it was entitled in, in 2018 in December, they came out with Our Shared Digital Future. And it talked about six major implications of how digital is changing literally the planet. Um, and so that was really great. But for this class, I zoomed way in and I created a simulation company. And when people walked in, they joined a team for a whole week and they had to 
um, basically solve either a manufacturing problem, a service problem, or a safety problem in a pretend forklift company, a pretend forklift division of GE. All of a sudden, we were making forklifts for, um, for commercial use. <laughs> and so um, I wanted to give them a, a reason to learn things like data analytics. So like every module gave them some piece of information about that simulation problem that they were dealing with. And yet, um, it was a safe way for them to all admit, I don't know anything about forklifts because we don't actually have a forklift division. So it was this, I want you to get really interested. I want you to have a reason to learn in class. We would, at the end of every day, um, we would cross teach each other. So if you were on the manufacturing problem team, they would have to go talk to the services team to find out how they were looking at their problem. And um, it was just a wonderful moment because everybody could lay their own expertise out, but their ego could get checked so that nobody had to worry about not knowing exactly how to solve the problem because we weren't working in, you know, engineering or we weren't working in their, you know, domain expertise of their business. And, um, and I felt like that was a really important part of this. Um, they basically had to um, solve what ended up being a problem for each one of their um, functions, but at the end, it was actually an integrated problem. Everybody was ending up solving a piece to the bigger puzzle. And I feel like um, as much as we explored the digital concepts, so we, we talked about everything in data analytics, collecting the data, right? That's completely, doesn't have to be digital at all, but the implications of not having a good data collection plan or not using some of the digital tools that are available to collect good data um, just cascades all the way down. And then uh, we also wanted them to practice in class digital adoption. So not only did I make them build a robot, um, in this class and other classes, I actually had them start making an infographics tool, the digitization of our communication. Everybody loves a good infographic now, but I will tell you, I couldn't even say that word two years ago, right? And then digital class tools. We had, um, you know, um, not only did we um, create a, a virtual class space, um, even though we were in the live classroom, we tried really hard to go as paperless as possible and to push people into a new digital tool every day, just so that we could get in the habit of, oh, okay, now I have to learn another tool and this is how I'm gonna fit it in. That tool didn't work for us, we're gonna go over here with this one. Started making those decisions, those, that evaluation process of why, why do I wanna use this tool? What am I gonna use it for? When have I decided that that's not working for me anymore? So there was like that whole level, not just concepts, not just the adoption, but the assessment. The hardest part about this whole class was what to, where to stop in terms of depth and what to leave out. Everyone we spoke to, every single expert that helped me with this class had a different opinion. So I talked to four people in cybersecurity and they had four different stopping points. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of the learning professionals that are listening right now have the same opportunity, right? Um, and I think, you know, if, if we get a chance to iterate on this class, we will do it differently probably at least every year, if not maybe even more often than that, because it's not so important exactly which tool we're teaching. It's the whole process around learning that tool, how to adopt, how to show, how to role model the adoption process and all its messiness. It's very, very important to us that people felt like um, knowing more about cybersecurity was actually just the beginning when they left class that it was their job to not only impart that new knowledge, but also maintain the curiosity and the responsibility of showing people how to learn faster and how to be okay um, jumping and figuring things out on the fly rather than studying something for six months and then being the expert and then being able to give your opinion. Um, that's just not working for us, at least inside of General Electric much anymore. Let me just get to my last slide so we can take some questions. I'm not used to speaking this long by myself. <laughs> um, 
the big takeaways, if I wanted to sum up my first six slides, um, context driven expected results. If you're expecting new digital leadership skills in your leaders, you have to help them get to some sort of today's definition of what does digital mean for you and your company? Where does digital show up in my work? So um, a lot of us take for granted the kinds of tools that we're using today. We have to slow down to speed up. You have to slow down a little bit and realize where am I taking advantage of digital tools? Maybe some of them are ready for an upgrade or frankly, maybe I'm ready for an upgrade. Um, one of the things that I try really hard to do is not write down a manual schedule anymore because frankly, my meetings change a lot, especially these days. Um, so I'm trying to be a little bit more digital and share my calendar so that the people that I collaborate with, um, we, we can get to each other faster. And then why? Why does digital matter to me? And another layer of why is why now, right? Okay, I get that that's gonna be important to me, but I think that's like important in six months. One of the conversations that kept coming up in this newer digital leadership class, I think the most digital class that I've ever created and, and had the privilege to teach is like, I'm exhausted now. I am full out now. I don't understand why I have to learn this thing that's not even a thing for my team yet, right? Or we have people that do that. <laughs> I love that. We have a cybersecurity team in my, in, in, you know, in my division. Don't they take care of all of that? And the answer is, it's a handshake, right? You have to know a little bit about what they do because it's not their job to know everything about what you do. And without, the, without knowing a little bit of overlap, your hands aren't touching. And so eventually what's going to happen, especially in big companies like ours, the silos right? Don't know what the other guys are doing, right? So if we're not even touching, um, we have to know just a little bit to be dangerous in both directions and to touch. That safe space to learn, I take that very seriously. It's a huge part of our jobs as learners. Um, it's, I go right out front. I don't know everything about what we're talking about. I had to bring in experts. It's my job to be your guide on the side and say, here's what it is. I had cybersecurity experts in my classroom when we're going through of that. And you know what I did? I stepped aside and I said, okay, here's my slide. How do you want to help us through this? Right? Tackle concerns, fears, and that lovely word bias. We all have it. We're human. And it's okay. Um, I like to weave it in. Um, little um, optical illusions, brain teasers, other things to just remind us how many assumptions we're actually working under and how little fact we actually use in our decision making. That's like always brings the house down when we start getting into facts versus assumptions and opinions. Practical practice, um, not just an alliteration, but um, getting people close enough to what they do for a living without actually putting them in a live, um, you know, problem solving scenario in class so that it still feels safe, but getting pretty close so we have to study what our, um, what our students are, are actually doing for a living or get that out of them during the class in order to make sure that the exercises, the activities, the simulations are pointing back to things they can actually use. And this idea of learning to learn differently, I have absolutely been um, patient zero on this, right? Um, came up, uh, whew, I was in college in the 80s, the 1980s. And, um, and we learned in a very different way. Things were a lot slower. And, uh, and right now that's not good enough, right? And, um, and knowing enough information to get you to the next step versus you know, taking the elevator to the top. I see um, my learning happening in chunks um, and a lot more informally. And we have to make that okay for people, um, especially people of a certain age who you know, were always thinking, I need to earn a degree or I need to be able to get through a certain amount of certification before I can feel knowledgeable enough to apply my learning. I'm pretty sure that getting new knowledge and applying happens in the same day a lot of times today. <laughs> and that's gotta be okay for us, right? And knowing, still knowing our limitations. 
which is the third part. Digital development is never actually done, right? The changes come up so fast and furious and we, we really um, just not need to, 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 to change if there's some fear there, to change that into curiosity if we can. And to also for our colleagues and the people who are learning next to us and around us is to suspend judgment and to make them feel like it's safe to learn and share um, and lean on one another, right? So this idea of never being done is also can be a huge benefit to collaboration if we approach it with the right mindset. So those are the takeaways I had, but I'm really hoping we have some more questions. I bet you guys are thinking about things I'm not thinking about. Uh, thanks a lot, Beth. Uh, really, yeah. really great uh, and insightful points that you've put in and quite practical too. I really like the, uh, your specific example of uh, the digital leadership course um, that you put in. Uh, we have a lot of questions, so that's a bit of good news, <laughs> Beth. <laughs> Um, one of the, I would say, beginning, begin with the, beginning with the end in mind, uh, there's a question here about evaluation, measures. What were your measures of success uh, for this yeah. program? Considering yeah, everything that's... that you said, considering that it's a journey, considering that it's not only just knowledge, but also people, you know, the leaders having to model. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so that was a really important part and, and it was challenging because of the different divisions, right? Some of the technologies that we produce are much more sophisticated than others. Um, there, it, it primarily in our leadership classes, it's, it's primarily metrics around um, did the learner feel more confident, right? So there was, um, if you think about Kirkpatrick's learning levels, immediately yeah. we test for learning that we also set up a post program to see um, and, and continue the learning and then some surveys for both the learner and the, um, the, their direct manager. And have they been seeing any impacts of their learning in their um, applying on the job? And so we, we always strive to, to capture that data. It becomes really challenging when people go back onto the job to actually get them to you know, um, come back and right. fill out some surveys, but that's what we tried to do was to make sure that um, the learning component, not the how much did you learn on cybersecurity, but I feel more confident in understanding um, what I have to do to, to get this technology right on my, um, where, where I watch for the business, so on my team. Okay, so that was part of your post-evaluation. Yes. Um, did, you, did you also look at, uh, let's say, having practical projects or initiatives uh, yeah, after we, like, creating a way to gauge? Did you look at that? We too? tried to keep the teams together and, and engage them on some projects afterwards. But I'll, I will tell you, our, um, it has been a wild ride inside of General Electric. And um, our intent was very good. Um, the execution um, we've been through um, three different uh, CEOs in the past three and a half years. Um, we were not able right. to keep up the momentum on keeping the learning um, teams together to see if we could get them to continue. Um, definitely had some informal connections between the teams that continued. Um, but I have to say that um, the business of business got in the way of us doing the best job we could post class. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ben. Sure. Uh, and there is a, also a challenge, like as a, let's say, as an L&D uh, practitioner, as a senior leader, let's say, in our organization, or even just as a, you know, a leader, regardless of uh, where you are. Uh, when, you saw, when you talked about learning to learn differently, this applies not only to the leaders that we're going to train. I think it starts with us, right? Uh, us, us being practitioners and the ones creating that safe space, creating that culture of uh, digital learning. Um, what do you think are the two vital skills that you developed when you, when your company embraced uh, the digital world? And let me add another one. What were the things that you had to unlearn? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So yeah. um, that depth equals um, one of the things I had to unlearn was that um, depth of knowledge 
equals um, your ability to have impact, right? Um, yeah. That hurt, <laughs> honestly. Um, my parents yeah. and my brother and my sister-in-law, all educators, right? So I, have, I come from a deep, deep, deep DNA level um, pride and respect for the educational process. Um, so it was only a matter of time before I ended up in the learning world. And I have to say that um, to be out of your to be out of your depth, but still be on um, as as the person who's in charge of guiding the room, right? Um, so that was one of the hardest things for me to realize is that I was going to be like um, the old adage: never present someone else's material. <laughs> Half of yeah. that was me presenting someone else's material because we couldn't afford as much as we wanted to. Um, we were running this class in nine different countries. We couldn't afford to fly our experts all over the world. And so we had to create modules that could be done by the lay person, right? Um, and, and then to provide examples and quite literally to hope that there was someone in the audience, because generally there was, um, the, the people that were attracted to this class, someone in the audience that knew more than you and you had to figure yeah. out how to still be Right. For me, I had to not be the smartest person in the room on that material um, after 20 years of teaching project management and you know, other things that I was really comfortable with, um, really comfortable handing over the, the content reins without losing the, um, the experiential um, responsibility and, and frankly, the leadership of the experience in the room. Right. So you turn you, you go, you go facilitator, moderator instructor right in 20 minutes and 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 right. you have to pick an expert and then run into an activity so right, right. It's my learning yeah. yeah in one of our sessions someone was talking about instead of being a facilitator facilitator now we're more of a curator yes uh, exactly great right. word yeah, yeah it's very humbling <laughs> yeah it is i think it's part of it now that no one really knows everything and having the humility to learn from each other, I think that's a, that's a strength too. It's a strength of character, but if you also create a culture like that, I think that's, that's, that's a competitive advantage that's hard to beat. Absolutely. And it's one of our core values now. So it's, um, it's definitely something we're embracing. Right. Uh, we have a set of questions also related to how do you make your leaders embrace dig digital changes? Uh, for particularly those who either way in some form or another they're resistant to the change or they just depend on let's say their younger staff to uh, you know to do the work for them <laughs> to do the yes. heavy lifting um, how yeah. do you yeah how do you um, overcome that yeah so um, I like to actually just go right to the heart of um, why people resist right and so we actually do that. That's where I love to talk about, you know, bias and assumptions and, and, and really peel that for people where it's not just, I don't have time to learn a new tool. That's very rarely it. These people have been paid um, really well to learn a whole bunch of new stuff a lot, right? So there's generally yeah. something under the surface and we want them to be comfortable being a little bit more self-aware. And uh, yeah. every, every yeah. one of our leadership classes has a whole bunch of self-awareness in it. But at the end of the day, um, we basically just say, look around, right? Look around at what the potential is. Look around at what some of the other things that are going on. Um, and I wouldn't say it's outright fear, but um, I think most of our leaders, they take great pride in staying relevant. Right. And so this idea of you have to you have to make that point A, I am still here and I still want to be an effective leader and I'm here. Right. I'm in a development opportunity. We're very lucky. We don't get people who don't want to come. Right. So they're already here because they feel like, OK, I still want to be a good leader or I want to up my leadership um, game. Um, we need to make that a very short putt too. And guess what? Te technology is part of leadership and being more digital is, it, is really the only way that you can't right. get there without it, right? Yeah. 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 We can't have the excuse of knowing, not knowing what we don't know. 
right? Exactly. Like leaders exactly. now, you have you have to know. <laughs> Even if you don't know, you have to know what you don't know. <laughs> yes. It's a bit and, of a I, that. I'm with you. And I and I feel like more than anything, the um the quote that I use in every class because it's always relevant at some point, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If you meet uh, people at their point of resistance, right. and say, I want this for you. And this is, yeah. I care about you as a leader in our company. And this is it, man. This yeah. is something that people need from you. Right. Yeah. And get yeah. them to understand that you don't, it's, it's not, it's, it's not you telling them, right. It's you inviting and saying, join the party. This is a really yeah. cool. Party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like what you said about, you know, people don't care about what you know. It's whether they know that you really care for the business and care for them, right? For them, right. Yeah, for yeah. them and for the business and for, oh, by the way, cybersecurity. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But that's the third so, thing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the third thing. Um, uh, there's a question on... And, you know, we're almost at the end of this. Time really flies. Um, it's really been enjoyable. Uh, but there's a question on sustainability. Uh, how do you keep the momentum? How do you... You mentioned about leadership changes. That's one, I would say, yeah, that's a really good example of disruptions. But how do you keep the momentum for digital learning and creating that, creating yeah. that culture? Yeah. We try really hard to create either um, peer coaching or small groups that can sustain outside. Um, it, it, really, it really takes reverse mentors, coaches, other people to continue to support one another, right? And, and that is, um, that's our gold standard, right? So if you can put in place, if people make connections in class that um, you know, are personally supportive, it could be people from two different businesses, that's what we really try to go for in most of our leadership experiences because we don't have that many. We don't have like a, a class a year anymore. I know I won't see these people again sometimes ever, right? So what we try and do is foster um, their feedback loops and to know that leaders never do it alone. Find your support group or find your support person for just, you know, you may need a different person for different technologies or different leadership capabilities, but please ask for help, seek help, and seek feedback for how you're doing, no matter what topic we're talking about. That's great. That's great. So in a way, it's really breaking down the silos, as you mentioned, and uh, developing a community. Um, yes. And letting, you know, getting, uh, enabling them to build those bridges so that they can help each other in the future. Yeah. Our, um, our, our little part of um, GE Corporate in Crotonville, we talk about inspiring, developing, and connecting people in our classes. And we feel like it's about equal measure, right? We, we need to help people in all three of those categories in order for them to be more of a sustained, right, learner. Right important yeah i like that inspiring yes. developing connecting yeah it's so it's definitely more than techno the technology although the digital yes. technology or whatever new technologies uh that's important but as you said with the rate of change now it's really hard for for a single person to keep up but you have that community that you've inspired that that are continuously developing themselves as well and uh making sure that they connect um, yes. more and over than beyond uh, beyond the classroom, beyond the learning session. Yes. Um, you said these are the keys to sustainability. Yep, and it's safe to call the person that you clearly know knows more than you. By the time they're through a few days of class, they, they also feel like it's okay to call that person and admit I don't know it, so yep. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. My pleasure. Uh, John, uh, I just want to make sure whether we have uh, time. Uh, it's 11. Um, I know there are a few more questions actually in the Q&A, um, but uh, I think 
if we could, we'll, we'll collect those questions and, um, and maybe Beth, if you can help us sense. answer those questions. We'd yeah. be happy to, uh, sure. Oh, that, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, uh, Beth. Uh, um, John, uh, do you want us to uh, conclude the session? Oh yeah, sure, Jose. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much, Beth and Jose, for for this amazing learning activity this morning. And it's Monday morning here. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that where Beth is calling from, it's actually eleven in the evening. So you just have to appreciate that spirit of volunteerism for our cause. Um, thank you so much, Beth, for 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 doing this for us. And I'm we have around four hundred fifty. Um, I saw a while ago four hundred fifty callers. Um, through Zoom, wow. and we have around, um, we're peaking at 90, from 80 to 90 live viewers in Facebook, which I think is a great number for all of us, um, mainly because a lot of people are learning. And you can see in the chat, the engagement is not stopping. <laughs> so so you, 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 you just have to be grateful for the type of um, um, connection that we're starting to make with the individuals who have been looping into the sessions that we have. Um, so Jose, thank you so much for the really awesome moderation. I know this is your first time to moderate in general for, for us. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I never would have known. <laughs> you didn't and I've inspired, developed, and connected. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> a very amazing job processing a lot of the information. And you see that there a lot of them are heavy information, a lot of them are practical information. And I think people have to recognize that it's not easy to go from heavy to practical just in a span of a snap. And you did a great job in doing that. Thank you so much for relaying um, and processing the information for all of us today. I also want to highlight for everyone that if you, if you, want, to, if you want us to keep on doing these beautiful things, um, please help us with our operations costs, of course. Um, be a member and attend our paid um, webinar session so that we will have more resources to be able to deliver these wonderful learning sessions for you. Again, how to be a member is very easy. You just go to www.pstd.org and in the lowest left section, you will see the member applications. And in the member applications, just fill it out and then we will receive it and confirm you as a member straightforward. So we hope you can help us in this journey. We are growing our community. Our online community has grown in a span of three weeks by 3,000 followers. That's a lot in just three weeks. And we would, of course, like to make the conversion so that we will be able to use the resources to keep the people that we have in terms of operating for PSTD. Um, I would like to thank also the Board of Trustees who have been very supportive um, with all of our efforts. You know, the Board of Trustees are volunteer people, same as I, same as Jose and the, the chair of the task force. They're volunteers. And yet we're here, we're helping out one another, just like the volunteer speakers, just like Beth and all of the other 14 speakers that we've had recently. So thank you for being with us in this movement. We're helping so many people. Um, and we hope that you can attend the remaining four sessions in the, within the week. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of them are also from General Electric, and if Beth is that standard for what General Electric should be. Oh, they get way better. <laughs> also, who we had last week, then you will know the type of engagement and the type of quality of learning that we will have in the next few days. You just have to go to uh, facebook.com slash mypstd, and you will see the advertisements for our free webinar sessions for the week. And I, I'm telling you, this week is one of the best there is, mainly because of the theme of how to digitize learning, which we all need given this time. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Beth. Thank you for all of the volunteers. Thank you for everyone who has been joining us in the last couple of weeks. See you in the next sessions. And mabuhay. Bye. Bye.